9 columns. Okay, so you will have 9 columns. So the first column is B, that is the basic variable. Then you have C, coefficient of the basic variable in the objective function. Then you have XB, then you have X1, X2, X3, S1, S2 and S3. Correct? So this is your simplex table. Okay, this is your simplex table. If okay. Then here, first is the basic variable, right? So the basic variable will be, what, which is our basic variable? As I have already told you, the basic variable will have the unit vector, okay, as their coefficient. So if you take this particular problem, you can see that our slack variables are the basic variables in the first um, simplex table. Okay, so you directly, you can write slack variables, that is S1, S2, and S3 because their coefficient is actually unit matrix or unit vector as you know. Okay. Now, my first call, my first row is S1, second is S2 and third is S3. Fine. So, what is the coefficient of these lag variables in the objective function? So, this is the objective function matrix. Z dash is equal to so and so. So, here you see the coefficient is 0, 0, 0. So, directly you can write here 0, 0, 0. Then what is XB value? XB value is given 7, 12, 10. So, you write here 7, 12 and 10. Fine. Now, you are copy pasting this matrix directly here. So, when you copy paste, this becomes 3, minus 1, 3, 1, 0, 0. Then again, this is minus 2, 4, 0, 0, 1, 0, then again, minus 4, 3, 8, 0, 0, 1, correct? This is our, this is our first simplex table. Now, what we have to do is, the next step is, find out ZJ value, okay? What is ZJ value? ZJ value means, this column into the respective XJ column, that is, first time XJ value corresponding to X1 will be 0, 0, 0 into 3 minus 2 minus 4. So, this matrix, this column matrix into this column matrix will give you the ZJ value. So, 0, 0, 0 into correspondingly you will get 0 everywhere because you are multiplying it throughout with 0. So, everywhere first you will get 0 as the ZJ value. Okay, then comes the next one that is CJ. Now, what is CJ? CJ means it is the coefficient of the objective function. Whatever is the coefficient of the objective function, directly you have to write that as your CJ. That is first is minus 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 0. Now, okay, so here, this is your ZJ and CJ. Now, what is delta J? Delta J is ZJ minus CJ, correct? So, ZJ is 0, 0 minus, minus 1, that is 1. Again, 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Then 0 minus minus 2 is 2, 0, 0, 0. Here you have one negative value. Okay. If you have, when you have one negative value for a maximization function or maximization problem, that, that means that the solution is not optimal. So, when you have this negative value, what you need to do? You need to find the replacement ratio. Replacement ratio theta. Now, what is theta? Theta is equal to, this is equal to xb divided by here the, in, uh, the incoming vector. This is the incoming vector x2. So, the xb x divided by x2. And this is xb and this is your x2 value. This is the incoming vector. So, whichever is the incoming vector, with that you have to divide the xb value. Now, see, first column, what will be your theta value? 7 divided by minus 1. So, this is minus 7. Okay. Then, 12 divided by 4, you get, what is it? 3. Okay. Then, then the next one is 10 divided by 3. 10 divided by 3 key element, you have your key element as 4. Okay, so 4 is your key element. This much is clear. Okay, so we, so we know that this particular solution is not optimal. Now, we have to improve the solution and construct a second simplex table. Okay, so here I have to construct a second simplex table. Fine, second simplex table. Again, second simplex table have these many rows and col I mean these many rows and columns. B C X B X1 X2 X3 S1 S2 S3. You have to always leave some provision for the replacement ratio also because we don't know whether this particular solution will be optimal or not. Okay. So just draw these columns. Fine. Now here we know that 
S1 will remain as such because S1 is not the outgoing vector. But which one is the outgoing vector now? S2 is the outgoing vector and X2 is the incoming vector. So instead of S2, you will have to write X2 here. Okay, all right. Then you will have the last column will remain the same. That is S3. Okay, clear. Now, here what is the thing that we have to consider is, here you see, um, in order to make this key element, the first thing, the first task that we need to perform is, we have to make the key element to 1. Because only then your base variable will become a unit vector or a unit matrix. Okay. So in order to make this particular element 1, what you need to do? You need to divide the whole row, that is this S2 row, completely with 4. Okay. So 4 divided by 4 will become 1. So when you are dividing this row with 4, 12 will change to what? What will be 12 divided by 4? 12 divided by 4 will be 3. Then minus 2 divided by 4, it will be minus 1 by 2. 4 divided by 4 will be 1. Then 0, 0. Then you have... 1 by 4 and then you have finally 0 here again okay now you have new elements in your second row now with this element you have to convert the first row into first this element element above the uh, the key element to 0 so how do you do that now you have 1 here so and here there is minus 1 so thing is you have to directly add 1 to minus 1 so it will become 0 is or no so add these elements in the new row with the elements in the first row directly you can add because here it's already 1 1 plus minus 1 is 0 so you can add the elements of the second newly formed second row with that of the previous first row elements so you will get 3 plus 7 3 plus 7 is 10 minus 2 sorry minus 1 by 2 plus 3 so minus 1 by 2 plus 3 will give you 5 by 2 then 1 minus 1 that is 0 then you have 0 plus 3 that is 3 0 plus 1 is 1 then 1 by 4 plus 0 is 1 by 4 and here 0 plus 0 is 0. Similarly, this element below 4 should also be 0. So here it is already 4 and you have 1 here. So what you need to do? You need to multiply this one with minus 3 and add it with the third row. Multiply this one means multiply all the elements in the second row with minus 3 and add it with the third row in order to get the newly formed elements of the third row. Clear. So when you are doing that, you are multiplying this whole row with negative 3 and adding it with this third row, you will get 10 minus 9 10 minus 9 you will get 1 then again you have minus 4 into sorry minus 4 plus minus 3 into minus 1 by 2 that is minus 3 by 2 okay so minus 4 plus my uh, plus 3 by 2 will be minus 5 by 2 then 0 then 8 0 then minus 3 by 4 and 1 okay so this much is clear now, what are the basic, what are the coefficients of these basic variables in the objective function? That is S1, X2 and S3. Now, S1 and uh, S3 we know it is 0. And what is the coefficient of X2 in the objective function? Coefficient of X2 is 3. So, we have to write 3 here. Alright. Okay. Now, the thing is we have to find ZJ. Similarly, you have to find ZJ value. Now, ZJ is 0, 3, 0 into the corresponding XJ. Okay, 0, 3, 0 into, first one is into 5 by 2, minus 1 by 2, minus 5 by 2. So, correspondingly, what will be the value? So, you will get ZJ value as minus 3 by 2, 3, 0, 0, 3 by 4 and 0. Okay, then you have the CJ value. CJ value is just the coefficient of the objective function that is minus 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 0. Fine. Then you have delta j value. Delta j is a j minus cj. So here the delta j will be minus 1 by 2. Then you have 0, 2, 0, 3 by 4 and 0. Now see again you have a negative value. That means this solution is also not optimal. Okay. So you have to find the replacement ratio that is theta. Now theta will be is equal to xb divided by which is the incoming vector? That is x1. xb divided by x1. Okay. So that means this is your xb. xb divided by corresponding x1. That is 10 divided by 5 by 2. So, what is the answer? For the first one, it is 4. Then again, 3 divided by minus 1 by 2, you will get minus 6. Again, you have 1 divided by minus 5 by 2. So, you have minus 2 by 5. Okay. So, which is your lowest value? Is it minus 6? Is it minus 2 by 5? Or 4? Which one is the lowest value? Here, when you can... Okay. Now, look at this replacement ratios. You have... You have 4 minus 6 minus 2 by 5, right? So, these two are negative. So, you have to consider only the positive value of delta. Okay. So, here we have to consider only the positive value of delta. Here also, we have considered only the positive value of delta. But again, here it is minus 7. 7 is a bigger value. But still, we have considered only the positive value. When you consider these two, 3.33 and 3, 3 was less. So, we were taking this as our 
uh, outgoing vector. Similarly, here if you take these two are negative values, we have only one positive value, so you have to consider the positive value. So here S1 will be the outgoing vector. Clear? So when you have S1 as the outgoing vector, you have to draw the third simplex table. Okay. Now we have to draw the third simplex table. Now tell me here which is the outgoing vector. Here you see S1 is the outgoing vector, X1 is the incoming vector and 5 by 2 is our key element. Okay, 5 by 2 is the key element. So you have X1 as incoming vector, S1 is outgoing vector and 5 by 2 is the key element. Okay, the key element. Fine. Now with this, we are constructing the third simplex table just like how we did before. You have B, C, X, B, X1, X2, X3, S1, S2 and you have one more S3. Clear? So here the first row will be C. Here S1, right? S1 is getting replaced with which one? Which is our incoming vector? X1. S1 is replaced with X1. So you have to write here X1. Then you have your X2 which is already done. Then you have your S3. Clear? So these are our three basic variables. So when these are the three basic variables, what is the coefficient of these three basic, basic variables in the objective function? So now you see X1 is minus 1, X2 is 3 and S3 is 0. Minus 1, 3 and 0. So you can write minus 1, 3 and 0. Clear? Now what is the XB value and the other values that we will see? Now, the first thing is our key element is 5 by 2. So, we have to convert this 5 by 2 into 1. For that, what we have to do? We have to divide the whole thing by 5 by 2. So, this element will become 1. So, when we are dividing it throughout by 5 by 2, the first row, the first row will change to how much? What will be the first row? That is um, 4, 1, 0, 6 by 5, 2 by 5, 1 by 10 and 0. Okay. Now we have this new element. Similarly, because we have divided this whole thing by 5 by 2. So 10 divided by 5 by 2, how much it will become? It will become 4. Correct? 5 and 5 get cancelled. Okay. You have to fill the second and third column. The second, this element, that is the element which is below 5 by 2. These two elements should be 0. So for that, what we have to do now, we have this one as 1. So you can multiply this one with 1 by 2 and add it with the second row. So you will get elements for the second row, new elements for the second row. And again, when you are multiplying this one with 5 by 2 and adding with the third row, you will get elements for the third row. So similarly, after computation, I, I will write the elements of the second row. Second row becomes 5, 0, 1, 3 by 5, 1 by 5, 3 by 10 and 0. And the third row, again, it will become 11, 0, 0, 11, 1, minus 1 by 2 and 1. Clear. Okay. So here... Again, you have to find the ZJ value. How do you find the ZJ value? What is the ZJ value? Tell me. This is ZJ value, right? So, minus 1, 3 and 0. This into XJ. This column into first column, second column and so on. Okay. So, minus 1 into 1 plus 3 into 0 plus 0 into 0. So, finally, your ZJ will be minus 1, 3, 3 by 5, 1 by 5, 8 by 10 and 0. And CJ value? It's already given minus 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 0. Now you have your delta J value. Delta J is 0, 0, 13 by 5, 1 by 5, 8 by 10 and 0. Now just see this. Here there is no negative value at all. So since, since delta J is not negative, solution is optimal. Okay, solution is optimal. Therefore, what is the value of X1? X1 is 4 x2 value is 5 and s3 is 0 sorry s3 is 11 you have s3 value is 11 so here it is not x3 is not coming in the basic variable x3 will be considered as 0 now put this thing in the z like in order to get z value put these values in the equation z is equal to minus 1 into x1 plus 3 into x2 plus minus 2 into x3 correct plus 0 0 0 because s1 s2 s3 coefficient is 0 so minus 1 into 4 is minus 4 plus 3 into 5 is 15 minus 0 correct so you will get z value as 11 clear so your this is this is 
not z if this is z dash okay this is the maximized value maximization of z dash so you get z value as z dash value as 11 so now what is the question we have to find the minimum value of z so when you are minimizing z the z value will be what it will be negative 11 so actual the z value is minus 11 okay so that is the solution